music people. Lend us your ears. We shall return them better than we found them. Especially when it comes to identifying the Neapolitan chord in a progression. This is Music Student 101. Here are your hosts, Jeremy Burns and Matthew Scott Phillips. And so it begins another great episode of Music Student 101. It has begun. I'm Jeremy Burns. I'm Matthew Scott Phillips. And that was Mike Cunliffe, our announcer. Our good announcer, Mike, who's been our announcer the whole time. I right? know. Loyal yeah. and talented. <laughs> um, we got a very good episode today. I'm very excited about it. Me too. It's perhaps a little overdue. I think maybe. Uh, but we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Indeed. If you are coming off the last episode, um, Native American Music Part 1. Right. You heard us talk about the band Redbone. Yes. Right? Yes. Now, I kind of ended up deep diving into these cats and really getting into them, <laughs> you know? And I watched that video. Um, oh, yeah, of the of the dance he did. In, uh, yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, <laughs> so, yeah, these were two brothers, you know? Yeah. Mexican-American brothers, uh, Pat and Lolly Vasquez uh, Vegas. Yeah. And they were the two Mexican-American brothers. This was the bass player and the lead singer. Okay. Um, which I thought the lead singer was the Native American one because he really has that, yeah, yeah. that kind and of... Yeah, yeah. He was the guitarist, though. So, yeah, the, the, guy, the guy who actually came out in the... In the, in the, um, in the cost, in the, in the dress, yeah. Yeah, that, he, that's Tony Bellamy. He was a guitar player. And, uh, and he's from the Yaqui tribe. And then Pete DePoe, the drum player, was uh, from Chi the Cheyenne tribe. Nice. So um, I listened to this album, w Wavaka. Yeah. And, uh, man, there's some of the tightest grooves... Oh yeah, I mean, that bass player is insane. Seriously tight grooves, and the drum player too. Really cool fills yeah. and really cool ideas, and uh, it's just worth checking out. Definitely, Red Bone. We're good old Red Bone. Yeah, <laughs> and you know, it turns out that's a cage, that's a Cajun term for a mixed race. Yeah, which is kind of interesting. So they're kind of like, well, we're just going to own that. They're just going to own it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, let's let's talk about some new things. We have a new review. Awesome, a new review. Yeah, we got uh, five stars from bassist, not bass player. <laughs> what do they have to say, Matt? Interesting. Um, okay, so uh, they say, This podcast has been the easiest way I have found to gain knowledge on the subject of music theory. I have lugged my way through researching, through countless websites and books without mentorship. These two absolutely take the place of a couple cheery mentors, mentors, who make it exciting to come back to the subject without it feeling like a chore. Hmm. I imagine many self-taught, broke musicians with a burning desire to make quality music and share it with people know the feeling of not having resources such as somebody with the ability to explain an idea like modulation and how to get to different keys smoothly. Hmm. It feels, although I might be speaking through ignorance due to lack of experience, hmm. Like I'm receiving university level knowledge for free, and I am thankful these two fellows decided they'd create something like this. Uh, it has broadened my musical vocabulary and has already made an incredible impact on the music I have been able to write after practicing ideas they have talked about. It would have to be two bassists that wanted to share this knowledge and educate a mass of people. <laughs> Thank you both. I like chicken. I like chicken. I like chicken. That's the last line. Yeah. They, I think they just threw that in there because they wanted to hear us say, I like chicken. <laughs> but if you like chicken. But if you like, I mean, I love chicken. Who doesn't like chicken? We support that. Yeah. Um, chicken is the bass player of any meal. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Bassist, not bass player. Thank uh, you so much. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for the kind words. Uh, really is kind of university level material in, yeah. in a lot of these podcasts. It really is. No, yeah, you are. You're not. This is not ignorance. You're speaking the truth. Mm, yeah, uh, and many people note that. I and, mean, this is the these are the subject matter that that I teach in theory courses in, at university level. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I model the uh, the show order. On that, on that curriculum. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So anyways, uh, when you send new reviews, it helps us out in many ways. It boosts our presence. Indeed. Um, we still have that one bad review that's kind of up on the page. <laughs> people can still see. So if you send us some new reviews, 
the one out of two bad reviews we've gotten in the last seven years of doing this can actually kind of be buried a little bit. Wait, we have two? I thought we only had one. Oh, no. We had one three years in, and then we had another one three years in. So every three years, we get one bad review. <laughs> every three years, we get one bad review. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll live with that. Yeah, yeah, me too. It's not, that's, that is not bad. That is not bad at all. Nope. Hey, so now we have a new Patreon patron. Okay. Now, as you know, patreon.com slash musicstudent101 is where you can go if you want to give us a monthly donation to yes. support us. And you'll get stuff. And you'll get stuff for it. For $1 to $2 a month, you'll get uh, access to the page where you can get to see all of our bonus episodes. Mm-hmm. And then for um, 3 three to $4 a month, you can get uh, that plus a coffee mug. Yes. Or whatever vacuum seal kind of beverage holding thing we have. Right, at the at moment. The, at the moment. And then for uh, $5 plus a month, you can request a special episode. Indeed. And we will answer your uh, music question specifically for no less than 15 minutes. And I think we actually have someone here who has asked us a question. Excellent. We have uh, a new Patreon patron, Devin Montez. Mm-hmm. Uh, from Long Beach, California. Now, Devin has recently welcomed a baby boy into his family. No, how nice. So congratulations to you and your family, Devin. Uh, they named this child Ozzy Katsumi. <laughs> Isn't that great? <laughs> nice. That's pretty epic. Yeah. Uh, so Devin was also kind enough to leave us a review a little while back and also support us on Patreon. Excellent. So what does Devin have to say? Devin says, I must commend you on the remarkable chemistry you all share on the show. It reminds me of the camaraderie I have with my musician buddies. And I often find myself laughing along with you guys. <laughs> By the way, I hope you received the review I left for you on Apple Podcasts. Well, mm-hmm. thank you, Devin. We did. Uh, your show has been a source of inspiration and entertainment for me. I am thrilled to inform you that I am just a year away from graduating with my BA in film composition from Berkeley Online. How do you like that? Oh, wow. Wonderful. Uh, the journey has been incredible, and I am excited to showcase everything I've been working on while listening to your show. I first learned about the podcast from my former professor, Professor Welch, who was my theory instructor at Victor Valley College. Oh, that's impressive. Mm -hmm. Professor Welch is an exceptional viola teacher who has played a crucial role in my musical journey. Not only did he provide invaluable guidance, but he also wrote me a letter of recommendation, which greatly contributed to my acceptance into Berkeley Online. Uh Aha. Oh, that's amazing. So a shout out to Professor Welch. A shout out to Professor Professor Welch. Welch. Uh, Matt, as a professor, how does it feel to hear other professors get the accolades like that? Is it? Is uh, it... it makes me a little nervous. Oh no! <laughs> I got <laughs> I gotta like watch what I say because it's actually other degree holding people. Oh. No, it, it, it's is great. I I love that the the podcast is making it w- its way into academia a little bit, and you know it is becoming a resource. I always I always hoped that this podcast would become a resource for you know music students trying to get musical degrees. You know and so, so yeah, uh, very gratifying. It's proven to be so, Very huh? gratifying, yeah. Well, I think it's really cool um, of Devin to give a shout-out to the professor. Indeed. I can think of a couple of really good professors I had that really did kind of influence me as a person and oh, as yeah. a musician. Absolutely. So how cool. Absolutely. So, Devin, keep us posted. And we're going to hear more from Devin because Devin has sent us in some music. And Devin actually has some really good stuff. I mean, really cool. good music and some really awesome videos, like really good, well-produced videos that go along with it. Excellent. I was watching some of those last night uh, with drone shots and all kinds of stuff, man. Wow. The Monterey Band is the name of the band I'm talking about. Very nice. The Montereyband.com. Oh, cool. Check okay. it out and you can see go some Go check that out. Ones. Yeah, and he can really sing and play and uh, it's just really good stuff, well-produced. And he also has like a hip-hop alter ego, which we'll talk about. <laughs> Probably on that Listener Compositions episode coming right Probably, up. Probably, yeah, which is which is on its way. Yeah, absolutely. So, Devin, thanks again for your Patreon patronage. Thank you again, Devin. Keep the music alive and uh, keep us posted on your progress. Absolutely. Um, okay, now, um, in lieu of Listener Mail, just a couple of things. Yep. A lot of people still continue to write in asking for book recommendations. So, Indeed. So, uh, what I teach from, uh, what what I learned from was Tonal Harmony Mm -hmm. by... uh, Stephen Koska. Stephen Koska and Dorothy Dorothy Payne. Yes. And then we we interspliced that with um, Harmony in Context. Miguel Roy Francoli. Yeah, that was the one Matt kind of has more of an affinity to. Yeah. And um, I see in many places what he's talking about as I cross-reference these two textbooks for the show. 
Absolutely. Really, it's a, it's a good idea just to get as many perspectives as possible. Oh, yeah. But all yeah. that to say, this is a college level, you know. Indeed. Of course, basically. Indeed. And then, Matt, I think you had one that you recommended, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, Alan Fort's Tonal Harmony and Concept and Practice. Mm-hmm. It, it's a little... Uh, it's a little more of a deep dive. It's a little, it's a little more cha- of a challenging read. It's not really designed to get these concepts across easily, mm-hmm. uh, but um, you do kind of get a deep dive. And it does set you up to understand Shankarian analysis, which is something Alan Force is a big proponent of. So, Oh, we might mention that a little bit later on too. Indeed. Well, having... Oh, and then one more thing. Um I've decided that uh, it is kind of cool. We get more and more comment, you know, people commenting on our YouTube videos. Yeah, and I, it's easy, quick, and easy, and it's easy to respond to. So oh yeah, it's fun. It's cool, and maybe that helps to uh, boost. I'm not up. sure. We knew, we had. I didn't know we had YouTube videos. Yep. A- every time, well, there's a service called Libsyn that I use to okay. blah yeah. blah blah nuts yeah. and bolts that I upload to, and it uploads to Spotify, Apple, all the all the oh, uh, nice. platforms. But YouTube, I decided that I'm going to make that the website on our website. Yep. Where I used to have a listen button where you could listen to the episode while looking at the website. I'm going to go back and replace all those with the YouTube videos. I am so looking on YouTube right now for our podcast. Oh, yeah. It's just a picture of our logo with our sound, except for the ones that we did during COVID where you actually can see videos of me and Matt. Uh, Terrifying. Did you know one of our listeners, they were like, Matt, looks kind of like a rock star which you do <laughs> and he was like jeremy looks like a basketball gym coach or a high school a high school gym coach which i kind of do <laughs> with a beard i got this kind of short cropped hair and kind of a broad chest yeah we are on youtube look at that yeah. all right awesome so anyways that's um i think that's going to be the main because i don't think youtube is going anywhere anytime soon uh let's hope not yeah so anyways Check out YouTube. We, you can find us there, and um, that's one another one other easy way to find us. And feel free to comment, or like, share, subscribe, and all that stuff. And all that good stuff. All that yep. stuff social media people are telling you to do these days. Which I'm terrible at. Yeah. But yeah. Me too. Don't follow my example. But we digress. But we digress. Today, we are here to talk about the Neapolitan Chord. The Neapolitan Chord. Can you refresh my memory, Jeremy? What is a Neapolitan Chord? If you want a really good refreshment, you can go back to episode 61, the Neapolitan Chord, where we talked a lot, a lot about the theory yeah. of that chord. Yep. But in a nutshell, as you said on that episode, it is basically a flat two major chord. A, yeah, a major flat two chord. A major yeah. chord built off the... St- Flat two scale degree. Yeah, it is considered a predominant functioning chord. Uh huh. It is very often found in first inversion, which makes the the third of the chord the note in the bass. Mm hmm. And that note happens to be scale degree four. Right. Right. So it moves four, five, one, just like a traditional four, five, one would. But instead of like doing a major four, which is the easy way, or like a two chord in, in first inversion, which is also pretty easy uh you're doing this flat two in first inversion so it kind of has this feel of you slide it feels slippery to me it slides out of the scale you're in for just a moment it is a chromatic chord yeah Yeah. and it slides out of the scale you're in and and then back you mentioned that word last time too slippery slippery slippery. sliding everywhere huh yeah yeah it just feels kind of slip because it's not it's not a dissonant chord the way augmented six sixes are Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, it it it's a it's just a major chord. So it's a consonant chord, but it's a consonant chord from some other place entirely. So it kind of feels like you slipped out of the the key a little bit. Oh, and before we go too far, I should probably tell the listeners what's going to happen in this episode. Yeah, we, we are going to recap a little bit from ep- episode sixty one in terms of the theory. Yeah, and we're going to be playing some examples so we can kind of get my, my ears especially primed for the Jeremy torture, which is going to happen. Is, which is what is to call at the end of the episode, where Matt is actually going to sit there and play three or four progressions for me while yeah. I use my ears to try and determine what chords are being played. Yeah, and this won't be too torturous a Jeremy torture, I don't think. I think it'll be pretty obvious what the Neapolitan 6 chord is. I'm going to voice some of my concerns before we get into the ear trading part, but I do have some. <laughs> okay. It's true. It's true. Um, and real quick, a little bit about the history, right? Yeah. So it's traced back to the 17th and 18th century. Pretty much. Kind of Baroque Italian opera. Yeah. Um, one or the more notable ones was Alessandro Scarlatti. Yeah. Out of Naples. Mm-hmm. Um, but this was not limited to Naples necessarily. Oh, no. Uh, uh-uh. Um, it sort of originated in Naples with, with Scarlatti and, and some of the opera composers really of the late Renaissance slash early Baroque. Mm, okay. 
Um, since the t- term the Neapolitan, and it was actually the Germans who said, who called it Neapolitan, hmm. right? Uh, as in that core that they use down in, oh, okay, yeah, down in Naples. Uh, yeah, right. Why, why would the people in Naples call it Neapolitan? Yeah, it was just a chord. Right. It was just a chord. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, but but yeah, it's um, it is found then sort of as dramatic. It, it gets to be used very uh, with a lot of frequency as you uh, approach the mid classical era, I suppose. So Mozart, Beethoven, you find a plethora of Neapolitan sixes. Schubert. Schubert is a uh, romantic era, but yeah, you know, once you were in the 19th century, this is this is a very common chord. Okay, so it's kind of still growing in popularity yeah. throughout the seventh, 18th century. Yeah, as chromaticism increases. Hmm. Anything yeah. else? Uh, that's pretty much it. Okay. Uh, well, uh, you know, we know Beethoven used it. We talked about that last episode, or yeah, yeah. episode 61, which we'll oh, constantly yeah. reference here. Um. So let's just give a little review of some of the theory topics. And I'm going to ask you, as I, I, I actually listened to this episode um, okay. last night. All right. As I was cleaning up and took some notes. Excellent. Can't and wait for this. So here we go. As far as the theory goes behind the Neapolitan chord, um, it, it does have two accidentals in major, right? Correct. The flat two and the, wait for it, the flat six. Uh-huh. The flat six. And uh, can we actually, let's just go ahead and start giving some listens to some of this. Like you talked about a second ago, let's compare the one, four, five, one. Okay. To the one Neapolitan. Six, five. Well, let's do a Neapolitan first and then do a Neapolitan six. Okay. Well, Neapolitans might give you parallel fits. So don't be offended at me. Oh, yeah. But here we go. So I'm going to be in D major Uh because that feels like fun. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And then one, four, five, one, very simple, right? One, four, five, and then back to one. Mm-hmm. If I want to do uh, Neapolitan, um, I'm going to go one, and then this E flat major chord. Mm-hmm. And see how that just kind of slipped out of the key a little bit? Yeah. At uh, five, one. Mm-hmm. So. And those parallel fits are killing me. Yep, yep. Um, so to avoid those parallel fits, I'm going to put this in first inversion. Okay. So that I'm going to use the same bass line I did in, in one, four, five, one. One, four, five, one. Right? Uh-huh. Just instead of going to that G major, I'm going to go to E flat major. Uh, hey, do you mind doing one more time with the bass uh, an octave lower? Yep. So... Um, bit of a bite to it yeah and mm, dum, ba, yeah it, but at least we avoided parallel octaves right? at least we avoided parallel octaves yeah. okay so the difference is what we what the, the i could have probably put a fifth in there and made it a little bit fuller so uh it was um one and six five one yeah yeah okay that was Pretty smoother good. yeah that was a little smoother and it's supposed to be smoother as an N6 chord. Okay, rewinding a little bit. So the D, if you're looking at uh, harmonic analysis, yeah. we call this a capital N. Capital N. For a Neapolitan chord. Uh, I've also seen it just referred to as flat capital Roman numeral two. Yeah, I've seen that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. flat two chord. And then the six uh, hyperscript that is, that is uh, the figured bass means it's in first inversion. Right, yeah, so there's the Neapolitan and root position, just a Neapolitan chord, but yeah. then when you put it in first inversion, it becomes the N6 chord. Yes. With the six in superscript. Yeah. Right, yeah, okay. Superscript, not hyperscript. Yeah. I'm kind of, I'm a dumb. But. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, that's, in, and, and what I noticed was it kind of like took the five, not only was it slippery, sli- sliding out of the key itself, but it kind of almost took some of the power away from the five chord. Really, you think? Well, until you heard the one chord. Yeah, because it almost it's a predominant. So I see what you're saying. Yeah, and and a, and a kind of a chromatic predominant. So you're you're pulling to that five more forcefully, mm-hmm. right? Which can almost make the five sound like a tonic, I suppose. But this is this is kind of what they liked about about it was that. Um, you know, so so we we've got this right, pulling to the uh, pulling to the 
root of the five, and then we've got this flat two pulling to the fifth of the five to natural two. Oh. Yeah. Very yeah. interesting. Oh, yeah. Now, we talked a little bit about <laughs> the pronunciation of N6 versus the sixth. It's like, why do we call it an N6 chord when this, the first inversion chord is a chord with the third in the bass? Right. Right? And that creates an interval from the third to the back up to the root. Mm -hmm. And that creates an interval of the sixth. sixth right. Right. Yeah. And this is why we call it a six chord. A six chord, yeah. Okay. okay. And, but it is, a, is the, it is the interval of a sixth. <laughs> it is the interval of a sixth. With a TH. Which makes it a six chord. So, and, and, and in jazz chords, if you, have an, if you have a C6 chord, you got a CEG with an A in it. Yeah. So there's a little bit of things you have to keep in mind. There's some kind of mixed nomenclature here. Yeah, because uh, that, <laughs> that example of... Uh, um, a, a jazz chord C six, and usually that six wouldn't be in uh, superscript, right? That would just be like the same size as the C. Yeah, it means you know add the interval of a sixth above the root of that chord. So mm -hmm. add a six above C, and yeah, that's A. So you have an extended harmony. Yeah, right. Um, mm. When we're talking about or an altered chord, I guess I should say. Uh, well, the same thing. Okay. Uh, in uh, figured bass nomenclature that six means like as you say the interval of a sixth above the bass and that just kind of works out to giving us a chord in first inversion mm -hmm. because what it has done is take the root of that chord and pushed it up an octave so that the third is in the bass voice and created that sixth but we still call it the N6 chord we call it the N6 chord with the number six hanging up with the Neapolitan TH. six I think it's probably safe to bring up the Phrygian mode actually we didn't talk a lot about right. that in the last episode. Well, the Neapolitan chord in any inversion is a uh, diatonic to Phrygian mode, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so it is often referred to as a two chord that has been borrowed or thought of rather as a as a two chord that has been borrowed from Phrygian mode, mm -hmm. since it is in fact diatonic to that mode. Yeah. Um, yeah. So so. Um, some theorists will re refer to the Neapolitan chord as the Phrygian two, mm -hmm. or the Phrygian flat two. Yes, uh, apparently Shankarian. Heinrich Schenker Schenker did. Yeah, yeah, that's that's where the Schenker comes in. Yeah, goodbye Schenker. <laughs> Good old Schenker. Short and we, sweet. Yeah, but he 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 had the kind of the the kind of big theory that everything was like one big one five one progression, or was that somebody else? No, you, you're thinking of the right guy. Uh, I'm just. Simplifying that, the that's a it. little bit of an oversimplification. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One day we'll talk in more depth about well, that. Yeah, I, I, I've got to actually sit down and, and gather up the courage to actually do an episode on Shanker, but it is coming. We probably have ways to go before that, anyways. So yeah, take your time. But don't dally. Yeah, but don't dally. <laughs> um. So you know, in many cases, the flat two wants to resolve down, but this doesn't always happen in the Phrygian kind of, or I'm in the. Uh, case of the Neapolitan chord. Not always. It will resolve, uh, it will walk up to the scale degree too. Mm -hmm. Perhaps it does in a, um, in a one, six, four credential kind of thing. Now that, yes, that flat two can often, so same, same, let me see if I can do that instead in the same uh, chord progression. So one, Neapolitan, two, um, one, six, four. Uh-huh. Five, one, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so in that case, yeah, it kind of did sort of just just uh, slide back down. Mm -hmm. um, and then we'll go back to mm, very nice. <laughs> yeah. So in the major key, it is more chromatic. Yeah. Because the Neapolitan chord contains two accidentals, like we said, the flat two and the flat six. And the six. flat six, right. Now in minor, where it is more common, right? It can be more common in minor. Um, we only have one accidental. Can we hear be it? Yeah, because of that. Because the flat six is diatonic in minor, right? Yeah. So it, it, it's just that flat two. So if I do this in D minor, uh, um, I can go... Uh, Mm 
Hmm. And it sound it didn't sound quite as sliding out of the key, right? Mm-hmm. I barely noticed it, in fact. Yeah. Can you do a minor with a uh, just a regular ne- root position Neapolitan chord? Uh, sure. So, uh, one. No, one six four to five to one. That was cadential, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. A little bit of a five seven in my cadential motion, you know, for you know, for, you, for you lovers of seven chords. So when I do my exercises, we're going to do a couple of major and a couple of minor. So mm-hmm. I need to kind of prime my ears here. Mm-hmm. Um, but you, I remember you saying that you kind of like it in major. You kind of prefer it in major. It, it's kind of cool in major. I always, I always thought. Yeah. I mean, I always kind of thought it was sort of. Um, yeah. Kind of, kind of gives it a little kind of a, a little bit of a jazzier feel, a little bit of a you know chromatic kind of sophisticated feel to that chord progression to me. Yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, so in minor, you already had that flat six, so the only thing new is the flat two, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, what else? What else about this crazy chord? Oh, if you do a if you do a seventh chord in 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 major and minor, this will be a major chord. Yeah. Now, if you do a seventh chord, if you add a seventh to it in both keys, it'll also be a major seven chord. Yeah, which is pretty interesting. So, what's going to happen is is that one stays where it is. Mm-hmm. That was pretty. That was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. That was pretty cool. <laughs> Some composition ideas for you. <laughs> yeah, for really. Listeners. Now. Rarely does this chord go to a minor to a minor four or a diminished two. Yeah, I don't know why that's relevant. I mean, it's a predominant functioning chord, so no, it would not. I see why it's yeah. Tell me about it. Uh, so it's those tendency tones are leading pretty strongly to five. Mm-hmm. So you, you don't really see a whole lot of this kind of because sometimes these predominant chords are interchangeable, right? Uh, you'll see things that are in two that then go to four. And 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 then five, right? Or, or four, and then two, and then five. Right? Yeah, they're kind of switchable. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're kind of going back and forth in some, between some predominant chords. Uh, that is, that doesn't happen as much with a Neapolitan chord, uh-huh. for whatever reason. I, it might have something to do with the tendency tones being pretty strong, mm-hmm. but really, for for whatever reason, that that tends to happen less. Mm-hmm. Um, that is pure. Casca pain too that it will go four two or two four. It's like you're talking about changing one note. <laughs> hey, but just oh. just for fun, let's hear what it sounds like to go from um a one like in minor. We'll do like okay. a a one Neapolitan. I think you're starting to stall a little bit, but huh? I think you're starting to stall a little bit. <laughs> you could be. But I'm trying to enrich my brain here, my, <laughs> my ears. Yeah. Huh? Can we do like a minor like one to Neapolitan to to to, to diminish two and then so, to five? So. One. Neapolitan. And then the diminished two is going to be. Oh wow. Then five. One. Yeah, let me let me clean that up a little bit. Gee, I kind of so, like that. Um, one. So one, and then the Neapolitan is going to sound like uh, to diminish two. That's diminished two six. Yeah. Third, uh huh. Oh, Piccadilly third, raise the third, huh? <laughs> slick, it's slick. Yeah. Um, I, I think maybe that's just hard to analyze because I only changed one note. Uh huh. Right. I only moved the flat two to the two. That's that's the only one note I changed. You know. Well, maybe that's why these don't go together a lot because it almost sounds probably like a non-chord tone. Because you would end up analyzing that almost as a neighbor note or well, an anticipation, right? Well, yeah, or something. Yeah. And and come to, and actually, this leads into the next thing I have here that um. If you go from an N6 to a two chord, it could also be just called an N6, like a two chord with an appoggiatura. Right. Exactly. <laughs> with a non chord tone, yeah. So it's not that it doesn't happen, it's that we call it something different. Uh, this is one of the little pitfalls in, in really trying to understand music theory is sometimes our nomenclature gets in our own way. Yeah. Right. So it's not like that thing I just played is bad or doesn't happen. The problem is if you're thinking vertically, mm. if you're thinking of Neapolitan chord goes to two chord, well, you don't ever see that. 
And it's because you wouldn't analyze it that way. Mm -hmm. But that thing can happen. Mm -hmm. It's still there. Probably does happen, you know. And uh, just to real quick, the the appoggiatura is the non-chord tone that uh, it goes as approached by. Is approached by a leap. Yeah, okay. And yeah, or uh, yeah, is approached by a leap and then resolves by a step. By a step, okay, yeah. Right, yeah. So. Although I just played it as an incomplete neighbor, I think, but. Does that matter? Or, or maybe anticipation since it was a chord tone in the next next chord. Well, anyway, I'm, I'm it, just nerding out. Don't, yeah, don't it, always, it depends on how you voice it for sure, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, now, so let's talk about some of the uses um, other than, well, we, we've talked about it being mainly of a predominant function. De- predominant function always. So, uh, always? Stand well, by. Okay, always is a dangerous word. Stand what are you by. reading over there? <laughs> I got something for you. <laughs> Well, you talked about the use. Well, so anyways, predominant being something that comes. I already know what you what you're about to say. So, there has been incidences where this has actually been used as a dominant chord sometimes. So, um, those uh, instances usually, uh, in my memory at least, usually involve modulation, mm-hmm. where a Neapolitan chord in first inversion is reinterpreted as a five chord in first inversion. Mm-hmm. And, and then is led to a, a one chord in a new key, and that one chord will happen to be a tritone away. Aha. Uh-huh. Right? So we can we can be in uh, we can be in D minor and we can play this uh, beautiful little Neapolitan six chord. Uh, right? Mm-hmm. And then and then just from there go to uh, and then from there, just kind of go where? Can I kind of go? Uh, oh, now all of a sudden. Now we're, we're in A flat. Which is a tritone away. So that's a very from, from distant. From D, D minor, yeah. Pretty distant key, isn't it? Pretty, very, very distant. You don't get much more distant than that. Um, now, I think there's also instances you mentioned like in Latino music. And also yeah. in jazz, where it can't actually play a dominant. Where it can, where uh, well, uh, where a two chord often substitutes for a, for a dominant chord. Yeah, where or like a, a natural two will often substitute for a dominant chord. I run into that in a lot of South American music, and um, it's not as it's not as common, but a flat two also, especially if you're in Phrygian mode, can can, can sort of function as a as a dominant functioning chord that leads back to one in that culture. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Very cool. Very cool. And then um, you, we talked about borrowed chords, right? You know, yeah, it, how it can be used among borrowed chords, right? I mean, these are just all kind. Of, you can do anything you want to, of course. Uh, yeah. But, so it, it's actually kind of really cool uh, among. Uh, so if I'm in D major again, I'm liking D major today. Apparently, I love D major. And I'm going to go uh, to. Uh, so, well, let's go. Let's go to a borrowed six chord. How about it? Mm-hmm. So, uh, all right. So I want to. Uh, so that's going to give me uh, B flat. Mm-hmm. And now I'm going to go to this E flat flat two chord before resolving back down to uh, you know five six. Hmm. Yeah, that was pretty cool. That's very cool. Yeah, you know, get get, get sort of that little. F- uh, uh, fifth going down to the almost. I was almost a key change to E flat there for a minute. <laughs> you could have if you wanted to. Yeah. With relative ease. Re- with relative ease. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay. Well, I mean, that's kind of all the uh, all the kind of theory stuff that I remember talking about. And right. Maybe listen to a few things now for a little bit of fun. We're gonna maybe listen to some examples in pop music. Or... Okay. I still think you're trying to put off the Jeremy torture, but all right. Oh, no, we always have to do this. This, <laughs> this is the fun part. <laughs> this is the fun we gotta part. Gotta have a little fun before we get to the Jeremy torture. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have my guitar here. Awesome. Let's see here. Okay. Now, in episode 61, we talked about uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yep. It was a da 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 Right, and that's the Neapolitan? Yep, that's the Neapolitan chord. We talked about Abbey Road from the Beatles Because, the song Because. Yep. From Abbey Road. Yep. And then we talked about Moonlight Sonata from Beethoven. Oh, sure, yeah. Beethoven did like the Neapolitans. So that was 
uh, kind of a little bit through the, the first opening part, the one that everyone knows of, you know? Yeah. But if you want to listen to that, go to episode 61, which you probably should have done. Anyway. Before this, <laughs> before anyway. <now. laughs> which we recommend. Which we recommend. Right, right, Yeah. Right. Hey. Um, so we got another one here. I, I did some digging. It's, there's not a lot of examples of Neapolitan chords in pop music. Really? Uh, that interests yeah. me. Well, less than I would think. Mm. It starts to come out a little bit more in hip hop, a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that Phrygian thing, and then, uh, well, the Phrygian. There's a lot of like death metal bands and stuff like that. That do sure, that kind of stuff. yeah. But some people that people might not have heard of. Yeah. But anyways, um, so here's a good one. Let's see if you recognize this. Space Oddity. Yeah. Totally. You just had to hear those two chords. Yeah. Ground control to Major Tom. Uh huh. Ground control to Major Tom. So on. So that's just F major seven. Yeah. Which sounds right, you know, yep, Neapolitan. Yep. To E minor. Yeah. So we're in the key of E minor, so there you go. Yeah. Um, and in that case, one, well, I might argue that it almost takes a dominant function. I might argue that too. I might. I might argue that's kind of Phrygian mode mm-hmm. in general. Yeah. yeah, and I think a, a good bit of these actually are. You know, yeah. Come to think of it, for sure. In one of our Patreon episodes, we actually did something regarding the band Megadeth. Yeah, and the song Sym- Symphony, Symphony of, Destruction, of Destruction, which is actually. Uh, yeah, this is the same thing. We got an F major. Yeah. To E yeah. minor. Right. It was just a power chord when I did it. It was just kind of a power chord, yeah. I, I, I was uh, I was thinking, yeah, this is probably more, is, is much Phrygian mode as it is anything. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because yeah. remember, the Neapolitan chord is diatonic in Phrygian mode. Well, that's interesting. So you might even say that some of these are, are not necessarily Neapolitan chords. More like, yeah, just, just diatonic two chords. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Again, you know, about, you know, the nomenclature, about what we call things getting in the way. Mm-hmm. Right, you know, um, these these aren't chromatic chords in in Phrygian mode, right? These, these are just diatonic chords, which is why when you think of the flat two is almost borrowed from the Phrygian mode. Mm-hmm. You know, people will call the Neapolitan chord the Phrygian flat two, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know? or the Phrygian two, right? Or the Phrygian two. So, again, a little bit of mixed nomenclature, maybe. Uh, I mean, a little bit, maybe of a need to make distinctions, mm-hmm. you know. Um, Neapolitan chord is is a this is why it's important for me to think of the Neapolitan chord as a chord that is moving to five as a chord of predominant function. Yes, and in, in, in both of these cases is moving back to one. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's not doing that predominant Neapolitan thing. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh then that might apply to the next one that I kind of came up with on my own, actually. I remember we used to cover Sexy Back by Justin Timberlake. Yeah. And this is actually um A major with a Neapolitan, so to a B flat major, back to yep. A major. A G A flat A. Yeah. yeah and again, a, a, a flat two chord in the context of Phrygian mode. Right, right. So I'm I'm learning um, after finding these examples and just using the chords um, that yes, these are chords that f- can be considered Neapolitan in the key you're in. Right. But everything else happening around it is actually suggesting these just to be in the Phrygian mode. Yeah, so, it, yeah, um, when you're in major and minor and you see a flat two, that's a legit Neapolitan chord. Uh-huh. Um, you know, uh, in Phrygian mode, again, it, it's, it's a diatonic, so it's really just more of the two of Phrygian mode. Mm-hmm. You know, but again, these concepts are related. Mm-hmm. You know, like, this is why we call it the borrowed, or, or the Phrygian two, mm-hmm. you know, when, when, we, when we play it in a major and minor key. Right, right, right. This is why Shanker referred to it as the Phrygian two. Works for me. That makes sense. Well, let's just continue with the examples and see if... Uh, let's, see, let's see what else we get. If yeah. we have actually any actual Neapolitan chords. Okay. <laughs> so there's a song by Beyonce called Break My Soul. Mm-hmm. And we start off in uh, G sharp minor. Yep. C sharp minor. So right. just one and four, basically. Right, yeah. Uh, the melody starts with... No, you won't break my soul. Yeah. You won't break my soul. Yeah. Now, that's the first half of the song, but... The second chorus of the song, it actually goes like, um, it substitutes that four chord with an A major. So it's like, yeah. uh, break my 
abrazo. I see. Yeah. So we have the C sharp minor going to the. F- well, this again sounds Phrygian, but it's a Neapolitan. Yeah. Or is it? You know what I mean? Uh, Same problem. I think that might legitimately could be uh, called a Neapolitan just just because of the it's a substitution for a four chord. So it's you know. Aha. Uh-huh. Um. Because you can go back and forth to four and one. Right, you know, but instead we're doing it. So then that's establishing G sharp minor, right? Yes. Uh, not so much, you know, G sharp Phrygian. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, the the four would be minor in in, in Phrygian. So, uh, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it still would be. Yeah. yeah, but one one four one by itself doesn't necessarily make me think Phrygian, right? Like, you know, then then I guess if you add a B flat or, mm-hmm. or an A major, rather, mm-hmm. uh, you know. But getting there, we're getting there. Getting there. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, the last thing I got here is uh, Def Leppard. Uh, Bringing on the heartbreak. You know, that was one of my favorite songs. Of I was a big Def Leppard fan when I was in the fifth grade, you know, <laughs> sixth grade. And I thought this was one of the coolest songs they had. And it turns out it's got a little Neapolitan action, maybe. And I think actually this one does. Yeah, okay. So. Gypsy sitting looking pretty A broken rose with laughing eyes So you got a one, six, one, seven, four. Suspended. Yeah. And then we have a B flat to an E minor. Now that's a legit Neapolitan chord. Okay, so we're in the key of A minor, I should have said. Right, so yeah. So the key of A minor, uh, B flat major chord leading to the minor five. That is a legit Neapolitan chord. <laughs> Finally, we got yeah. one. All right. So Def Leppard, way to go, y'all. <laughs> way to go, Def Leppard. Okay, so one more time. We got a six. I'm sorry. We got a one. Yeah. Six. One. Seven. Four. Neapolitan. So five, minor five, yeah. and then back to one. Yeah. If they wanted to really drive it home, they could have done... Uh, right. Major five with the major five, yeah. But uh, they wanted to keep it just a little smoky, just a little mysterious, <laughs> I suppose, like a gypsy lady. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Okay, so we got one then. There we go. Yeah, and, congratulations. And, then, and what convinced you was the fact that it actually acted as a predominant function and went to five, yeah, afterwards, and then yeah, back, yeah, back yeah. to one, at, which was established, right? Right, okay, cool. Okay, no, okay. it is my time <laughs> for Jeremy torture. <laughs> We've put it off long enough, as I call it. <laughs> here goes my guitar, and here comes my notepad. We like to do these in, uh, what, maybe four listens is kind of the goal, it's kind of the target. Kind of the goal, yeah. Uh, the first listen, we're kind of listening for the bass. Yeah. Uh, the bass note. Yep. The second listen, we try and focus on the soprano or the, the highest note. Yeah. Uh-huh. Right? Lowest note and then highest note. Third listen, we try and kind of put those two notes and eat in, put those two voices together as each chord passes and try and do a little bit of, we try and use our ears to kind of see where, what chord qualities are. Yep. And then uh, kind of use our imagination a bit to fill in what might be the middle voices. Exactly. Kind of based on that. Exactly. But ultimately just trying to figure out what chords are being played here. Right, yeah. And then uh, the fourth listen, we try and maybe make a confirmation listen. Yeah. Or we can finally analyze it a bit more, and then <laughs> then I make my call, and you and you let me know how I did. Yeah. For better or for That's worse. That's the idea. Okay. You mentioned this one is slippery. Yep. It is tricky because uh, you know it's tricky for ear training because it's not a dissonant chord, like you said. Right. Um, and there's a few times where it sounds like it sounds like it just fits right into you know. I, I anticipate noticing. Some kind of weirdness, but not like I would on the augmented episode or the diminished episode. Right, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, so where the augmented chords and diminished chords might stand out like a sore thumb, I'm kind of concerned that this won't. Uh, I think it might stand out more than you think. And here's another thing I'm a little bit concerned about. Um, kind of the Andalusian cadence effect, I guess you would say. Yeah. Where in minor, you let's play like a minor one, seven, six, five, if you don't mind. Uh, so, um, one, 
Seven. Seven, and then uh, six. Uh huh. Five. That's called the that's called the Andalusian cadence. At right. the very end of that, we have a flat six going down to a five chord. So right, right, yeah. It has that exact same relationship. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So if I hear that, I might mistaken that for a Neapolitan to one. I think? don't think you will. You don't think so? No, we'll see. All right, Matt. We'll see, but I don't think you will. I appreciate that. Vote of confidence. All right, you ready? I'm ready. So let's be in G major. One sharp, key of G major. And we're starting with a uh, G in the bass. And the fifth of the chord, D in the soprano. Okay, so let's see here. You said G in the bass? Mm-hmm. The root? Yep. Uh, and then what, uh, what, what was in there so, uh, that's uh, for the fifth in the soprano okay the fifth so that's going to be a D mm -hmm. okay very good so listening to the bass huh listen to the bass mm -hmm. ready mm -hmm. here we go one two three four one Two, three, four. Okay, you're starting off kind of you. You're being you're easing me in here. I I don't think you, you. Yeah, I don't think you're going to have as much trouble with these as you think. Okay. Well, here's what I thought I heard in the bass. Mm -hmm. I thought I heard a one. Four, five, one. Mm -hmm. So far, so good. Second listen. Second listen. Oh, All and right. you know what? Next time, don't tell me what the note is because I have to. I need to use my ears to try and figure out what, oh, the, okay. what the soprano note is. All right. If you if you say so, I say so. Okay. This is this is the eleventh. I'm trying to challenge myself here. This is the eleventh <laughs> okay. harmonic progression episode. All right. Here we go. Uh -huh. Ready? Oh God, I can't sing that. Okay. Okay. Neither can I. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Okay. All right. Here we go. Ready? Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Uh, one more time, if you would. Even though this is the third, this will be the third listen. One. No, 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 no. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for it. I'm okay. gonna go for it. All right. We have a D, mm -hmm. <laughs> which would be the f five, right? Yeah. To flat six, to um, which is um, E flat. Yep. So I gotta put a little flat sign right there, and then back down to the same note, which was a D. Yep. And then I think it just stayed there. Bye. Yeah, and then two Ds. Yeah. Two Ds. Very nice. Okay. Killer. All right. Third listen. Third listen. Now Engage. we're concentrating on chords. Right? Engaging theory brain. Engaging theory brain. Concentrating on chords. Okay. Ready? Mm-hmm. One, two, three, four. I have a major chord, mm -hmm. I have a question mark, <laughs> and I have a five chord, and then I have oh. a one chord. There you go. So I think by a process of elimination, which is also part of the theory brain process. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I could deduct that to the second chord in there is probably our, our uh, Neapolitan chord. Yeah, assuming that, yeah, I mean, this is an exercise about Neapolitan, so you're, you're anticipating one is going to be in there. Exactly. Um, if it were not that... What would make you feel like that was Neapolitan and not Augmented Six or something? Uh, you oh, were right. If, by it, the way, if it goes to five afterwards, <laughs> well, Augmented Six is also go to five. Uh huh. Well, it's it, if I'm good enough at recognizing the quality, I'll recognize a major chord over yeah. an augmented chord. Yeah, if, yeah. If I bring that, uh, if I bring that bass voice up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, that's a major chord. That right? sounds major. Okay. Yeah. 
So that's your new pilot of six. See, I told you you wouldn't go and have as much of a problem as you thought. No, no. And what I was doing also, um, aside from listening to the chord qualities, I was noticing that this second chord was the only one that had a flat a, a chromaticism in it. Yeah. Or at least based on what I was hearing. There's also the two middle voices. Right, which yeah. Which I don't have notated. <laughs> right, well, but who cares? But it's a, it's a good indicator if you see one occidental, that's probably... Yeah. Suspect. So probably suspect, yeah. Okay. Ready to do another one? Well, let's listen. Uh, let's recap that and, and call it out one more time. Okay. So, um, easy enough. Uh-huh. Major key. Major key, G major. Uh-huh. So one, one. Neapolitan, Neapolitan six. Five. One. Yes, and Neapolitan six because we had the scale degree four in the bass. Yep. And, uh... Yeah, that's an inverted Neapolitan chord. Right. In yeah. First inversion. So technically, it is A flat major, right? Mm -hmm. With C in the bass. So mm -hmm. A flat over C. Yeah. All right, then. I am ready for the next one. All right. Let's do another one. Let's be in C minor. Oh, great. Um, three flats. And that's Big Ed and Dan. I still have to do that. <laughs> hey, listen, if I'm if so if I'm trying to figure out what letters in the alphabet, I can't just if you ask me what's first Q Q or S for example, yeah. I'd have to be like eliminated <laughs> <laughs> Q or S T U V because the song I learned. <laughs> Anyways, enough about me. So C minor. Okay. This is going to be fun. Okay, this is going to be fun, is it? Will For it? me. Yeah. Ready? Mm-hmm. All right, here we go. Okay, so I got to get the first chord, right? Yep. I'm going to start off with the bass, right? Yep. So we are in C minor. Uh-huh. And we've got the bass note is C. Uh-huh. And you told me not to tell you the soprano note. I'll get that on the next one. Okay. Yeah, so we're just going right. to start with that C right. note in the bass. Ready? Let's see here. Yes. Okay, here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, I think what I'm hearing is um, C going down to A, mm -hmm. which is a one to a? C, a flat because we're in the key of C minor. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay, so C down to A flat. Na, na, na. It sounded like maybe it just went up a step to um, to a D. But it's, that might be, oh, that might be our Neapolitan moment. I might have to give another listen for this. Yeah, so... One if it went up to D, would it have gone up by a step from A flat? No, I was thinking a step up from the original note. Ah, right. A, yeah. step, a step up from the na, na, na. So if I admit that middle note, na, na. I love how you're thinking. Yeah. But now ask yourself, is that a step? I think it's a half step. I and think, that would make that note. I think that's a D flat. There you go. Na, na, na. It's hard to tell when you jump back up to something like that. Yeah, yeah, but I love the way you're thinking, the way you're holding that tonic in your in your head, and you know, and and then you're just comparing first note to second note like that. That's a very great great way to get through some of these. Cool, cool. Well, I know I have five chords all together, and I know that we have a five one at the end. Yep. But I don't recall. Let's see here. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick that one chord in the very end. But as far as going from that, I'm, I'm going to use my theory brain a little bit because that's yeah, kind of Yeah, we're just dealing with the bass line right now. Right, right, yeah. So if I'm looking at a, a D flat, uh -huh. I, might as, I might think, hey, maybe this is going to go down to a, to a C, you know what But I mean? does it? But I can't because that's not, that's, that would be in the one chord, right? Yeah. So I'm just going to throw something out there and say maybe it goes down to a, um, a D, to a D flat. Yep. But then I think we, we go down again. Yep. Na, 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 uh, uh. Okay. What does that sound like to you? It sounds kind of like a leading tone. So, do. Oh, five, one. Yeah. Thank you, Matt. 
<laughs> okay, okay. Here's what we got then. We got one yep. to flat six, A, C to A, a. flat, A flat. There you go. And then back up to a flat two, which is D flat, mm. and then back down to a five, which is in the key. It's going to be a G. Mm-hmm. And back up to one. Okay, great. Okay, that was a little harder than the first one, for sure. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's focus on the... Uh, and, of course, I'm writing this down as I go. Yep. Um, so let's go on to the... Uh, to soprano. The soprano. Mm-hmm. All right. Same chord progression. Let me find out what note it is. Is this the note? Wow, you went down a long way. I think that was the the, the one. Probably the tonic, right? The yeah, tonic, probably yeah. the scale degree one. Apparently, I have to go all the way down. <laughs> if it works, it works. Na, na, na. I guess I could have done that. Huh. No, I could have. I could have. Anyway, yep. So we right. got the tonic. We got a C in the in the soprano. Yep. Okay. Show me what you got. All right, here we go. Mm-hmm. One, two, three, four, one. Two, three, four. Okay. All right. All right. So, first chord, we got a C, like we says. Mm-hmm. I think that stays in the same place for the second chord. Mm-hmm. And then, can you, and then, uh, okay, so the middle chord is where things get a little weird. Mm-hmm. And it jumps back up, but where does it jump to is the question. Mm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and just say flat two. I'm going to try and say that's a D, flat. Mm-hmm. And then down to... Um, Be careful you're not starting to hear an inner voice. Right. You mean for the chord we just did? Or the next chord? Uh, for, for what you're about to say, jump down to. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Be sure your ears are not jumping down into an inner voice. I'm going to play my extra listen card. Mm-hmm. Let's get an extra listen. I lost track. <laughs> Didn't know you had that card. <laughs> mm. Okay, I think we got like motion going up to the third. Yeah. To where maybe this last note is an E flat, and then the one before it would be kind of a leading tone type thing to that, which would just be the D. Yeah. The two chord, the two note. Yeah, be careful calling that leading tone. We might be overusing that term. You're right. <sighs> just because it's a half step doesn't mean it's a leading tone. Right. Okay. But so, kind of. I, I was kind of proud of myself for this, for this chromatic walk up to the minor third. Okay, so to, and to be sure, those those notes are C one, and again one, uh, flat two, uh, natural two, and flat three. Yeah. So C C D flat D E flat. Yeah. Okay. All right. Chord time. Chord time. Chord qualities. time. Listening for qualities. All right. Here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Interesting. I'm, I'm going to try and do this theory brain a little bit here, too, because I didn't do that so much last time. Yep. And I'd like to share that with our listeners. <laughs> so the first chord, we have what I feel is a minor chord, but it feels minor, you know? Yes. And we have a, we got a C and a C. We know we're in the key of C minor. And it's the very first chord, so what do you think? That's a pretty good chance we got ourselves pretty a... Pretty good chance that's a one chord. A minor one chord. The next chord, we have a C and then we have an F. I, oh, I'm sorry, we have an A. A. I know they're both A flat. <laughs> God. I'm going to start editing these out. But... No. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. Okay, okay. So we got a C and an A flat, and y'all see how I struggle with that. I need to. A... Okay. 
And I already know at this point, because one in minor to six is probably one of my favorite movements. Yep. I'm pretty sure I'm... You're pretty sure you kind of get this idiom? Yeah, yeah. But regardless of what it is, it's a major chord. Yeah. So this next one, we have two D flats. We got a D flat in the bass, and we have a D flat in the uh, soprano. Yeah. So in the key of C major or minor, a D flat is going to be a near... From two in a row like that, yeah. Good chance it's going to be a two. So Yeah, two in the same chord like that, good chance. And then we raise that D in the second chord, we raise that D up to a natural, D natural. And then the other note is a G. So what does that tell you? So they're both those chords are in a five chord, and by God, that feels like a five chord to me. Oh, yeah. And then um, back to minor. Yeah. Yeah, imperfect authentic cadence. Right. C minor. Exactly. So the chords I wasn't entirely sure on, I was able to take, I know I have at least two notes in each chord. Right. So I could take those and use my deduction skills. It's kind of like being a, an investigator. Yeah. Right? I like that. So the you know, um, two D flats in the same chord. So we probably didn't double the third. Mm -mm. So it's probably not B flat or anything. Oh, yeah. Right? We probably didn't double the fifth because I would make that a G flat chord. That would be crazy in C minor, right? Yes. That, that that almost wouldn't even make sense in C minor. So, uh what's left? Flat 2 maybe? Yeah. Next pop next most logical. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. And here's another thing, um rewinding to the first example, you had a 4 in the bass for that Neapolitan chord. Yeah. So that was in fact an N6 chord. Yeah. Now this, this however. This however, D flat in the bass, uh, the flat 2 in the bass, that just, makes it just old in in 5 3, I guess, but yeah. but just good old flat 2, yeah. Which never gets in. a lot of mention or love. It's always in 6 this and in 6 that. <laughs> yeah. No one ever talks about just the Neapolitan chord. Uh well, you know, we talked about uh, the textbooks we use at the, at the top of the episode, you know, uh Casca Payne do um talk about the in 6 4. Mhm. Mm uh and which is, you know, the Neapolitan and second inversion. Mhm. Mm Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and they also, I think they talk about the five of Neapolitan, which is kind of oh crazy to me, uh, but, you know, there you go. You wouldn't pull anything like that out, would you, Matt, for one of these nah. examples? I even asked Matt, I was like, give me a modulation. <laughs> I can take it. I don't think you can take it, but <laughs> hey, you know, hey, you never know what I'm going to do. All right, all right, so we got two more examples. Oh, actually, let's go ahead and play this one one, one more time. And okay, yeah, one more time with this one. So we've got in C minor, uh -huh. one... Mm -hmm. Six, mm -hmm. Neapolitan, five, one. One, yeah. Right. Sorry about that delayed one in the bass. But I can fix that. <laughs> it was just a little bit of drama. It's just That's a little drama. bit of drama. <laughs> okay, so there you go. All right. One, six, Neapolitan, five, one. Yep. All right, I'm ready for another one. All right, let me see. Let's go back to D minor, which is my favorite key today. Saddest of all keys. Pretty sure I haven't done that joke a million times. <laughs> but if y'all haven't seen Spinal Tap, see Spinal Tap. It is funny, funny stuff. Okay. D minor, one flat. That is a B flat. Ready? Uh-huh. Okay, here we go. One, two, three... Mm -hmm. The fourth chord, I think, is a weird one. Hmm. But uh, I think I, got, I think I at least got the first three uh, mm -hmm. chords. I think we we start off on D, like you said, walking up to two, walking up to flat three, or three Which and is minor. Just three and minor, right? Yeah, just three and minor. And then uh, that's just right back up to four, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there you go. Uh, Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, five, one. Great. Nice. Walking right up that scale. Yeah, buddy. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So soprano line. Soprano line. Ready? Let's hear what that note is. What that note is.
I'm gonna say that's an A note. That's a, probably an A. Yep. Great. Scale of degree five. Mm-hmm. All right. We ready? Yes, sir. Here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Wow, I completely lost at that time. <laughs> I'm just going to ask you to do it again. Okay, one more time. Ready? Hear that note one more time. Uh, uh, okay. One, <clears throat> two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I think we spent a lot of time on that note. Oh yeah. Um. So yeah. So. So those are all those are all C notes. Mm-hmm. And then we have a change. A, okay. uh, a note. Oh, sorry. We're yeah, A notes. Because we're in. We're yeah. Well, actually, um, at this point, I should probably just go ahead and try and guess them, huh? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Probably. Okay. So what I'm thinking I'm hearing is uh, we got an A. On the first chord, which is five. Yep. Uh huh. So five, and the next chord stays where it's at. Yep. Again, five. Mm hmm. Next chord, it stays where it's at again. Crazy. Mm -hmm. Five. And then I think we're moving somewhere here, but it's hard to tell where. Next. Oh man, it goes way down. Yeah, oh, it's very tritony, isn't it? I was trying to hear it go up, but it, it's, <laughs> the note just wasn't there. Yeah. Okay, so we go down to a, wow, flat two. Okay. But, uh, okay, so after this E flat, it goes up to, um, up to an F. Yep. And then down to, down to an E, and then down again to D, mm -hmm. which is the root. Yep. Whew. All right. Chord time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The seven chords, Matt. That's a lot. <laughs> okay. Now we're going to try and figure out the equalities here. All right. Chord time. Ready? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I think I got the qualities okay, except for the second chord here, but I'm going to try and do a little guessing here. We got, uh, so we got a minor chord, uh, one chord, because mm -hmm. we're in D minor. Yep. And then uh, we got, yeah, D and an A in there, so mm -hmm. that would make sense. Next chord, I think that, let's see, we got an A and we have um, an E. Mm -hmm. So that, yeah, that's, that feels like a five chord. Uh, passing five, six, four. Passing five six four, huh? Very very common thing. Okay, so we're gonna. That's a major, and in fact, a uh, yeah, major chord, possibly yep. dominant. And then again, so that brings us back to a minor chord again. In first inversion, so that's a one six chord. Mm-hmm. Okay, next chord. I'm pretty sure this is our Neapolitan action. Oh yeah. Um. And then the next chord. And I think this is our credential. Yeah, one, one, six, four. One, six, four to five. Yep. No seven, just regular five. Yep. And then back to one. Yeah. Okay, one. Okay. So let's, let's play that one more time while I read it out then. All right. Ready? Yep. Here we go. Okay. One. We got a five, six, four passing. Back 
to one. And then we have Neapolitan, and that is a Neapolitan six chord because yep. it's scale degree four in the bass. Mm -hmm. All right, one, six, four, five, one. Nice, huh? Yeah, I like that. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. I'm going to struggle to come up with more examples past this point because we've kind of exhausted what Neapolitan six does. Well, let's do one more in major. So this is um, A major? Sure. All right. Okay. Okay. Ready? Yeah. So we're listening for the bass line. Bass line. Mm-hmm. Here we go. Key of A major, so that's uh, three sharps. Bass is an A. Mm-hmm. Ready? Yeah. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, we got a one, down to a D, which is four. Yeah, mm -hmm. that felt like a yeah. one to five, but it's actually a one to four going down. And then we stay on that note for the second, third chord. Mm -hmm. Fourth chord, we move up to a C. Uh, what clef are you reading? <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, e. Isn't it E? It's an E. Yeah, yeah. And then back up to the one, which is A. Yep. There you go. Okay. So one, four, four, five, one. Yeah. Okay. Soprano note. Soprano note. Ready? Mm hmm. Here we go. I need to figure out what, the note, what that note is. Uh, you might. Let's hear it. Five. That's a, that's an E. Sing e. down. Da, da, da. Oh, we're a major. <laughs> da, da, da. I can't. So what does that make it? That's a one. Yep. That's another A note. My bad. Okay, so A in the soprano. Hit me. All right, ready? Mm-hmm. I think I'm hearing a movement that we talked about in that episode 61. Yeah. Where we actually have the one, and then again the one, and then we have this little flat two, and then to the sh seven, and then back up to the one. Good. Yeah. Very nice. Okay, yep. so that's going to be A, A, uh, B flat, G, A. G. Sharp, G sharp. G there sharp. <laughs> okay. Remember that key signatures. I, I feel like I'm rem reminded of this every harmonic progressions episode. <laughs> we just do them far enough apart where I forget about it. Uh huh. Can't forget about key signatures, unfortunately. No, I have no excuse. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so chords. Yes, sir. Ready? Mm-hmm. I know someone who's not going to like that at all. I do too. <laughs> Somebody who said that doesn't happen. Uh huh. And I just did it. I think what we ended up was on a half cadence, right? We ended up on a five chord. Uh uh. Oh, so something happened to really turn me around here. Mm. Something really happened to turn Engage me around. Engage theory brain. Okay, well, let's listen for those qualities now. Okay. I think we got a oh, we got a one chord, uh -huh. which is major. Next, I'm gonna say we got a four chord, four. And then next, um, I think is our Neapolitan moment. Neapolitan. Yeah. And then, yeah, the five. It's major. And then back to a one. Wow, what happened there then? Yeah. What happened there was something that Casca Payne says you're not supposed to do. I, I went from a four to a Neapolitan, right? Ah. Uh, changing, changing the one note, uh -huh. actually changing the two notes. Because we're in major. Yeah, from, yeah. 
uh, and, and, and making a Neapolitan instead of a four chord. That had a cool effect to it. I think I liked it, yeah, and, and it kept the four in that bass, yeah, so. So one last time while we call it out, if you don't mind. All right, so here we go. Uh-huh. Are uh, you calling or am I calling? I'll call it, yeah. You call it, okay. So we got a one, we got a four, Neapolitan, six chord, mm -hmm. and five, and then one. That's kind of what I'm talking about when I said it kind of takes the power away from the five a little bit. Yeah. Because I felt like that was a half cadence the first time, <laughs> ending on five. You know what I mean? Yeah. Crazy. Huh. It is kind of crazy. Well, thank you, Matt. Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, maybe I got a little your, better. Your torture is over. My torture is over. For the yeah. moment. Yeah, I guess I'm, if I'm thanking <laughs> you for that, I guess I'm There's a website for my type. Um, as far as recaps, really... Um, uh, listen to the episode on Neapolitans. Yeah, because uh, yeah, that's basically... Our recap would be a recap of that episode. Right. And at the yeah. end of that episode, we'd recap it. So you yeah. get all the yeah. recapping you need. So we've, we've, we've done all the recapping. Yeah. So we're not going to recap a recap. So. Nah, that'd be crazy. <laughs> that would be crazy. We hope you enjoyed it. Indeed. And uh, we'll see you next time. Have a good one. Are you hearing things any clearer now? If no, keep listening. If yes... Keep listening. For ways to support us financially, check out the donate page on our website, musicstudent101.com. You can find our merchandise at redbubble.com slash musicstudent101. And for questions or comments, you can write to us at info at musicstudent101.com.